Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have another shop talk video and today's topic is going to be uh, when you don't fix your car with one issue, it winds up creating another. And I have a clear classic example of this today and I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you guys. But before we go ahead and begin, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. All right, guys, so uh, as you guys just uh, heard in the title that I'm going to be covering uh, what happens when your vehicle has an issue that you don't wind up taking care of it, and then that initial issue can wind up causing a bigger issue. And this is going to be a little bit of a story time here. So this morning I had a vehicle come into the shop, which is a customer of mine, and he was previously in here, and I told him that he had a valve cover gasket leak and that he should consider fixing it because it was leaking quite a bit. And he just said, I'm not worried about it. It's an older car. It's okay. I'm just trying to get a couple more months out of it. So, you know, I left it at that. I, I wasn't going to push him. I'm not that type of uh, mechanic. Uh, I'm a mechanic first and foremost. I'm not a salesman. So all I do is give customers the facts, give them prices, and they can choose if they want to fix their vehicle or not. This gentleman obviously uh, chose not to. So it's been, I want to say, about four or five months now and uh, his renewal sticker came up but here in the state of Illinois in order for you to get a license plate renewal sticker every couple of years uh, what they wind up doing is you're required to go to emissions testing and this gentleman uh, just wound up being the lucky uh, one that this year before he can get his uh, renewal he has to get an emissions test and he went there apparently got the car tested and the car failed because I had a check engine light on and uh, then he calls me and says, hey, I got to drop it off. Can you take a look at my car? And I was like, sure thing. Go ahead. Bring it by. We'll take a look at it. So the gentleman dropped off the vehicle uh, this morning and I brought it into the shop, hooked up my scanner, read the code on it. And it only had one code and I don't have the exact code number. I didn't write it down, but the definition of it was bank one, sensor two, stuck lean which tells me that the oxygen sensor on uh, the secondary, I'm sorry, the first bank secondary sensor is not signal switching, given the computer uh, correct data the way it should be. And I wanted to throw in a light for this. Now I went ahead and I unplugged my sensor. I did a couple basic checks from the car side harness to the computer and things like that, just to make sure that all of my wiring was intact and correct. And sure enough, it was, I had no issue with the harness or the car side. And this struck me as a little bit odd because if I recall correctly, this uh, vehicle had oxygen sensors replaced uh, when they had a uh, catalytic converter theft on it, especially this one, because it's very close to the catalytic converter. So. I called the customer and I asked him, hey, uh, did you ever replace the uh, sensor when they stole your catalytic converter? He's like, yeah, it was all new and done. He's like, the muffler shop did it. And I was like, okay, and how long ago was this? And he told me it was at least a year, year and a half. So I was like, okay, makes sense. Uh, so I took that into account and I tested out my sensor. And I noticed one thing on the sensor, guys. It, uh, it was stuck in lean, or at least the way that I tested it, it was giving me relevancy that it was lean but it was kind of weird as I was holding it and fiddling with it uh, I can also see the resistances on the electrical voltage charts kind of change and I was like that's kind of weird because typically when a sensor fails and it's just stuck on one uh, side whether it's lean or inactivity or rich or whatever the case might be you typically uh, it just stays it doesn't fluctuate on voltage so it, it kind of provoked me to look a little further into it and what we have here right next to me guys is that oxygen sensor and a lot of you may be wondering mike well this video is uh about a repair that causes another issue well valve cover gaskets guys caused this oxygen sensor to go bad and a lot of you may be wondering well how is that even possible uh, how can that even happen in the modern world well quite easy i'm gonna have to zoom in here but you guys can see this uh, oxygen sensor right now hopefully the video uh, camera's focusing in on it i'm gonna go ahead and spin it and right about there you guys should uh, be noticing something quite odd about it and i'm gonna go ahead and spin it here in a lot of different directions um, so you guys can see 
So for those of you that uh, have been a mechanic or have dealt with this issue before, you probably know where I'm going to go with this before. Everyone else that isn't quite understanding what's going on and why this failed, I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you guys. So an oxygen sensor, even within its name, tells you what it does. It basically measures oxygen. That's its old point. If you look at the end that goes inside of the exhaust stream, you'll notice all these little holes here that kind of look perforated. And on the outside here, on the top where the connector normally would be in the wiring, you guys can see there's a hole there. And if you go around, there should be a couple more holes on the outside. So this side sits in the exhaust stream. This side sits outside to ambient air. And this does exactly what the name says. It measures oxygen. So this end is sniffing inside of the tailpipe after the catalytic converter has done its job. And it measures how much oxygen is in that exhaust stream. And it does a comparison with the holes outside of it that are sniffing the outside air for comparison of what's what. And that's how an oxygen sensor basically does its duties. It compares outside oxygen to exhaust oxygen in relevant terms to tell the computer if it's doing a good job as far as uh, cleaning off any unburnt uh, gases inside of the exhaust stream. And the reason why I was rotating this around guys, and I'll give you guys a little better close up now, as I'm moving it around, you guys will notice that one side looks like it's coated with something. And if I come in here, and I just start wiping it, you guys will notice that that coating that's on my glove now is engine oil. So what happened? This oxygen sensor sits relatively fairly uh, close underneath of that valve cover and the valve cover was dripping oil down all over the engine, getting all over our oxygen sensor. It got inside of these external holes right there as you guys will see. Uh, I just cleared this side up um, with my fingers right now, when I cleaned everything, you guys can see that buildup corner right there that I didn't wipe off. So what wound up happening is oil got inside of the external reading portion that's supposed to sniff the ambient air and it caused this oxygen sensor to go bad. All that oil over time caused some buildup in there and just basically rendered this useless. And uh, that's how this valve cover gasket that was leaking caused a bigger issue like a oxygen sensor not to work correctly, which in turn is causing this customer to fail his smog testing or emissions test for the state of Illinois. And this is not the first time I've ran into this, guys. Sometimes when they're just lightly coated in oil and you wind up getting this coat if you have a uh, you know fairly sensitive oxygen sensor, uh, mainly on like Honda Acura vehicles. I remember I had an Acura one similar situation, but it threw a coat as soon as some oil touched the surface and I was able to clean it off with some brake cleaner and it was working correctly. In this scenario, you guys saw, I mean, look at my glove, how much buildup was on there. It, it's a lot of thick buildup and there's no way I'm gonna take the chance of just trying to clean this and send it on its way. So I just told the customer, cause these are fairly cheap. Um, this vehicle is a Ford Escape, so these are like $30, $40 at your parts store. Uh, so I told the customer, listen, uh, this is what's going on. Better off to replace it. He agreed. He's like, I don't want to risk it because I got to, you know, reset the vehicle and drive it now to pass emissions. So he's like, can we just put a new one on there? And that's what we wound up doing. Um, and now the customer picked up the vehicle. He's driving it because he has to reset all the emissions monitors on there. So it's going to take him at least another 100, 150 miles of driving, depending on he's, how he's driving, to be able to reset a system to see if everything is cleared up. But I did retest everything and I saw the oxygen sensor switching um, how it should be with the new sensor and versus with this one where it wasn't moving at all. So I know the car is fixed and there's not going to be an issue moving forward. Uh, this video is just, you know, I'm making it just to show you guys how letting one problem go can cause another issue. Even something as an oil leak, which typically as long as you keep your oil full or whatever is leaking full, doesn't really cause too much of an issue. Uh, as you can see, it can wind up biting you and causing an issue. So it's just something to be mindful of. Typically, if there's anything going on with your car, and I always tell this to all my customers, whether you have a leak or something that needs some attention and it could potentially cause issues down the road, it's something that you want to address as soon as you can. Because if you wind up letting it go for too long, it can wind up causing an issue like this, where instead of this customer just paying for, uh, for a valve cover gasket, now he has to do a valve cover gasket still because the new sensor, if he continues to let it leak, will wind up uh, destroying it just like this one did. Uh, and he has to pay for an oxygen sensor and Libra as well. So he's basically paying for two repairs instead of just paying for the one initially. And the funniest thing of all this guys, and you guys may think I'm crazy for letting him uh, get a, go 
out of here and drive out is that he's still leaking oil i told him uh, before we replace it we should replace your valve cover gasket it's leaking pretty severely we need to fix it and uh you know this guy being a uh, old grump like he always is he's like nope he's like uh I'm not going to spend that kind of money because the valve cover gaskets on this vehicle, you got to take the intake manifold off and get to them. It's a little bit of a process. It's a little bit expensive or pricey, and he just refuses to fix it. So he just said he's going to put some uh, oil seal rejuvenator quotations there or mechanics in a bottle. We've covered those uh, on other videos before. So uh, he said he's going to try a product like that to uh, stop the leak, but uh, he definitely didn't want me to replace this, and that's what we did. And I made sure I made a nice little note on my computer uh, system and the receipt stating that there is no warranty on the new part because it's leaking oil from the valve cover onto it so if he comes back here tomorrow and his sensor goes haywire and it's broken I'm pretty much uh, am within my rights to tell him hey I'm sorry but I advised you and you didn't listen now I don't think I would ever go that far especially if he shows up tomorrow I can easily just warranty it out but I will probably give him a little bit of a, a talking to because you know situations like this uh, are caused uh, this this doesn't happen just randomly it's due to lack of maintenance on the vehicle and taking care of an issue so now that we covered everything guys uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail into this uh, I don't want to make this video too long so if you guys enjoyed this video please comment like and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys on the next video